Till now, we have studied about matter, its properties and its states. We saw how the particles in matter are arranged. Today, let us look at what can bring about a change in this arrangement, which in turn can bring about a change in the state and hence the topic effects of heat on matter. Let us look at the objectives for this video. To understand interconversion between states of matter, to understand the processes that bring about change, to understand latent heat of fusion and vaporization, to understand the difference between boiling and evaporation, and to understand the effect of pressure on matter. Now let us look at interconversion between states of matter. When you hold ice in your hand, what happens? Does it melt? What made it melt? Let us look at another example. When you are given a cup of milk, what do you see? Yes, steam, right? When do you stop seeing it? What is common among both examples? Ask yourself if the ice melts because of your body heat. Would you be able to see the steam after the milk is cold? No, right? It is clearly seen that the common factor out here is its heat, isn't it? The degree of hotness or coldness of a body is measured by what we call as temperature. So what does temperature actually do to change the state of a substance? In here, you can see a thermometer being placed in a solid, say sand, and this solid is heated. The red line in the thermometer shows the temperature and as we heat the body, the temperature rises. Look at the particle here. Can you see it vibrating? Is it slower or faster in comparison? Does it mean it is gaining energy when you are giving it heat? Yes, it is. When you heat a substance, the heat energy that you are supplying is transferred to the particles and this makes the particles move faster. This also increases its temperature. Energy possessed by a body because of its motion is termed as kinetic energy, which basically means that faster objects have more kinetic energy in them. So if we increase kinetic energy, we are making the objects move faster. That's exactly what heat is doing to these particles in matter. Here at different temperatures, you can see the change in kinetic energy showcased by the change in the movement or vibrations of these particles. You can see that as temperature increases, the particles start moving faster as their kinetic energy increased. We also studied that particles in matter attract each other, right? Think for a while. How will force of attraction between particles get affected by increase in heat? Here, you are seeing water being boiled. As the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the particles increases. This will reduce the force of attraction. Can you see a pattern here? A reason for the change in state? When particles have low kinetic energy, they are very closely packed. Vibrating in their fixed position, bonded closely with their neighbors and hence they are in a solid state. When more energy is given, the particles have increased kinetic energy. They are able to move faster and when enough energy is supplied, they move away from their fixed position and break away from the force of attraction from the neighboring particles and become slightly loosely packed, hence convert, get converted into the liquid state. Finally, when enough energy is supplied, kinetic energy is very high. Particles move very fast. The force of traction is very low. Hence, they are in a gaseous state. Time to recollect that 
state change of matter is a physical change over here you can see that the arrangements are very different in solid liquid and gases but the particles that is undergoing this particular state change is just the same the particles haven't changed at all this sums up what we have studied till now the variation in kinetic energy bringing about change in arrangement and movement of particles in a substance decides its state to understand the interconversion we need to understand how we can measure temperature right by now you must be aware of the units of temperature with celsius fahrenheit and kelvin as kelvin is the standard unit for temperature we will be using it in this video we generally use celsius right kelvin is nothing but degree celsius plus 273 for example if it is 0 degree celsius you are going to add 273 and you are going to get 273 kelvin other examples are on your left hand side let us now understand what is freezing Look at these water particles. Look what happens to it when I decrease the temperature. What do you think is happening? Are they coming together? Are they changing state? Yes. At room temperature, which is about 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin, it is in a liquid state. As the energy it has is enough for particles in it to be close enough to be a liquid. When we decrease the temperature to 0 degree Celsius or 273 Kelvin, water slowly loses the energy. The particles start coming closer together and start to slow down and start to become ice. As you can see here, the water particles lose energy and come closer. This process is termed as freezing, where the water is converted from liquid state to a solid state. 0 degree Celsius is termed as the freezing point of water. Be aware that the level of attraction between the particles change depending on the type of the substance. Hence, the freezing point of different liquids are different, which you will be seeing in a while. Here are freezing points of few liquids. Water has a freezing point of 0 degree Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Acetic acid has 290 Kelvin. Benzene has freezing point as 278.5 Kelvin. Chloroform has a freezing point of 209.5 Kelvin. And ethanol has a freezing point of 158.3 Kelvin. Let us learn about melting now. Now let us understand melting. When you start increasing the temperature of ice it gradually starts melting that is the particles gain energy start moving faster in their fixed position at some point break the force of attraction and move out of their fixed position and start breaking free becoming a liquid this point at which ice melts that is zero degrees celsius is called as its melting point Again, be aware that the level of attraction between particles of different substances are different. Hence, each solid has their own unique melting point, which you will be looking at in a while. Take a look at melting points of different solids out here. Melting is called as fusion. Let us get to know about latent heat of fusion with the help of this example where you see ice melting. When you heat a beaker containing ice, the temperature rises till it reaches 0 degree Celsius. At this point, the ice will start to melt. After this, even if you keep supplying more and more heat, you will notice that the temperature remains constant at 0 degree Celsius till the last ice piece melts. Let us understand why. Where is all the heat that we are giving going? Why is the temperature not rising? It is because it is being utilized to break the bond between the ice particles. 
little by little all the ice cubes become water and only then will the temperature rise till then the heat given to the ice is hidden which means latent and hence the name latent heat of fusion latent heat of fusion for any solid is the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of that particular solid into liquid at atmospheric pressure at its melting point. As you can see here, the latent heat of ice is 334 kilojoule. As 1 kg of ice takes up 334 kilojoule of heat energy to become water. Though both water and ice are at the same temperature which is 0 degree Celsius, know that particles in water have more kinetic energy when compared to ice. Now it's time to understand boiling. Now let us see what is boiling. Let us see what happens to water when we start heating it. When we heat water, we are basically increasing the temperature and hence increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. This gain in energy will reduce the force of attraction between the particles and result in more rapid movements. At 100 degrees Celsius or 373 Kelvin, the particles will overcome this pull and start entering the gaseous state. The point at which water starts entering the gaseous state at the atmospheric pressure is termed as boiling point. Boiling is a bulk phenomenon as in the particles in the whole bulk gain enough energy to change into steam or gaseous state. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius or 373 Kelvin and different liquids have different boiling point based on the level of attraction between its particles and how much energy they, they need to break free. Now let us look at latent heat of vaporization. What could it be? As we already learned that hidden heat or the heat that does not show up as rise in temperature is what we are talking about. Even here till the whole bulk of water is converted into steam the temperature remains to be at 100 degree celsius even if we continuously supply heat for water the latent heat of vaporization is 2260 kilo similarly all liquids have different latent heat of vaporization Latent heat of vaporization of any liquid is the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of that particular liquid into gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point. Let's get to know condensation. Let's see condensation. When you decrease the temperature of a gas, here it is water vapor. Basically, you are cooling it, resulting in reduction of kinetic energy of these particles therefore there is less motion particles are coming together as this is happening the force of attraction starts to build finally the steam turns into water this you observe when you place a lid over a container with boiling water as the lid is at a lower temperature the steam starts to cool down and form water droplets over it it's time for sublimation and deposition here are some examples for sublimation dry ice or solid carbon dioxide ammonium chloride salt and camphor similar to other processes the increase in temperature brings about a change in state of all these substances what is so special you ask most solids become liquids before becoming gases but these directly shift to gases try to find the reason on your own 
the reverse of this is also possible and is called deposition best examples are the soot deposited over a cooler surface when you burn something now let us get to know how pressure plays a role in state change now let us see what effect does pressure have on matter let us take neon gas in this container and start applying pressure there are two ways in which you can apply pressure either by decreasing the volume by pressing the lid or by increasing the number of neon particles so look at what is happening to the neon particles as we apply pressure would you observe and the particles coming closer look how more and more pressure is bringing about a change in state the best example is dry ice or solid carbon dioxide no wonder it sublimates there isn't much attraction between the particles as it exists in nature as gas under normal circumstance to remain as solid carbon dioxide needs constant high pressure the minute it is gone it becomes gas directly the other example is lpg that we use pressure also plays a significant role in change of state but only in case of gases and not in solids or liquids we have one more process left to understand we have heard about this process and read about it too let us try to understand it a little better yes it is time for evaporation look here what do you see why did only the uppermost layer enter the gaseous state is it different from boiling how let us look at the topmost layer of liquid here they are attracted by the particles from the second layer that's about it only from below they are attracted to it that's about it what they do is absorb energy from their surroundings and once they gain energy they break free from this attraction and move to the gaseous state it is very different from boiling as this is a surface phenomenon wherein only the topmost particles are involved but boiling involves all the particles in the liquid hence a bulk phenomenon and evaporation occurs at a much lower temperature when compared to boiling evaporation brings about cooling effect in its surroundings as it has lost some of its energy to the surface particles you can sense this when you pour acetone on your skin which immediately uses your body temperature to evaporate as it is a surface phenomenon increasing the surface will increase the evaporation that is the reason we spread the clothes while drying it wind increases evaporation while humidity decreases evaporation now it's time for recap conversion of solid to liquid is called as melting conversion of liquid to solid is called as freezing conversion of solid to gas is called as sublimation conversion of gas to solid is called as deposition conversion of liquid to gas is called as boiling and gas to liquid is called as condensation change in temperature and pressure brings about change in states state change is a physical change latent heat of fusion for any solid is the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of that solid into liquid at atmospheric pressure at its melting point latent heat of vaporization for any liquid is the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of that liquid into gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point evaporation is a surface phenomenon that brings about a cooling effect in the surrounding thank you